How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm gonna to talk about some advanced tips and tricks that I use with my credit cards in order to get the most cash back. But in order to do this, I'm gonna head back to my whiteboard and do some drawings on it. So let's head over there. So here we are back at the whiteboard again. Now I wanna make this video very generalized so that everyone can take advantage of the tips and tricks even if you cannot get certain credit cards. Now I wanna talk about a credit card framework. Every single person has a different set of credit cards, right? Some people have better credit cards, therefore they're able to get better cash back credit cards. And some people, even if they have the same credit score, they're not guaranteed to have exactly the same mix of credit cards. Some people might be really into travel credit cards, other people might be into cash back. So the total idea here is with whatever that you already have, you want to map out every single category that you have your best cash back percentage in. In this current month, I wanna list out what I have in terms of cash back percentage uh, based on the category first, just to give you an idea. Now here's a rough list. It does not include every single little category there is because there is definitely more in my wallet. Right now, I wanna emphasize that, for example, the Sears card, it's really good for me, but you can no longer get this card. So um, the cash back percentage that you get Personally, it's going to differ a little bit and most likely it's not going to be as good as 10%. It might be uh, hovering around 5% using a combination of the Chase Freedom card as well as the Discover card. Now right here, right now, this month, I'm going to get 10% off uh, cash back on gas, groceries, restaurant, as long as I spend more than I think $800. Usually what I do is I spend what I will and at the end of the month, uh, if I see if I'm short, and I usually am, then I would go to the grocery store and buy the rest of the balance, whatever balance that they require in order for me to get the um, minimum cash back because there's a minimum cutoff here. Then let's say I'm gonna spend another $400 or something. I'll buy an Amazon gift card at the grocery store and then yeah, it's gonna be $400 sitting around but I'll stick that in my Amazon uh, gift card balance. Then right now I'm getting 3% on travel on the BBAV Compass card. I'm getting 1.5% cash back on international purchases. I use this because there's no foreign transaction fee. It's called the Capital One Quick Silver card. And then basically um, everything else that's not in these categories, uh, I would spend it on the Citibank double card, which I get 2%. Now this is not completely true. There's also sometimes these 5% categories uh, in the Discover or the Chase Freedom. There might be other categories that I'm using, but um, I don't wanna completely concentrate on which cards has the most percentage because there's something more important I wanna cover today. Now I want you guys to take a look at these seven bills over here and see what the similarities are. First, I got gas, electric, water, trash, health insurance, car insurance, IRS taxes, and property taxes. The stuff in the first column does not have a fee when you use your credit card. The stuff on the second column does have a fee, sometimes it's like 1.5% or something. So therefore, if you use your credit card to pay those things, you're losing out on 1.5% in fees. Now, a lot of times people pay these bills on the first column with their checking account. Now you can also do something different where if you look at all the bills that you ever pay, just look at every single outflow that you have and see if they accept a credit card with no fee. If they do, then there is something interesting that you can do because you can essentially use all these things as a sort of like a buffer zone in order to uh, churn credit cards. On top of that, a lot of times these utilities will actually allow you to prepay many, many months in advance. For example, right now on my gas, electric, water, and trash, I have like several hundred dollars that's just stored up in there. Why do I have this? Is because I was churning a credit card and I needed to spend like some $1,500 and I'm like, I don't have anything to buy. I don't need to buy a lot of groceries. I don't need to buy gadget gizmos or anything. Uh, so therefore I prepay into these things. My recommendation is the most you should prepay is up to about six months of utility because if you pay any more than that, you're essentially losing in terms of depreciation of your money. Your money is gonna lose its value about two or 3%. So it's probably better that you only pay up to about six months worth and then the rest of the money, uh, you can stick this in your savings account, earn interest and stuff, because if you put money in these things, they don't give you interest. So you should limit the amount that you put in uh, these utilities. Now there is yet another interesting aspect about this because sometimes, you might be buying a lot of Visa gift cards. You might have some Visa gift cards that's just 
dangling around that's really really annoying i know it bothers me a lot when i stick it in my wallet it's really hard for me to use because as in the previous thing you see i get a lot of cash back from wherever i need to go 10 percent cash back gas groceries restaurants then without those where else can i spend money right it becomes like a very hard thing i don't go to like in the electronics store i know i was able to use it when buying tickets i was able to use it on an online store that did not have uh, gift cards to be purchased at a grocery store. You see how complicated it can get. So knowing that you can do this with these utilities, if you have some Visa gift card, then once you get it, you can go, okay, instead of bringing it to the electronic store and blowing it all off on a brand new uh, portable camera or something, you can just go, okay, yeah, you know, I got this brand new gift card, $50, $100, $200, whatever amount it is, you just shove it in one of these utilities, let it sit there, then it just sort of acts like a bank account, really, because once you put that money in there, uh, instead of these utilities withdrawing from your bank account, it's withdrawing from that gift card. So therefore, when you do this, you're not losing out on the cashback percentage you would have gotten if you use those cashback credit cards instead, because you know every single opportunity that, that you go to a gas, groceries, or a restaurant, you can get 5% cash back. In my case, I get 10% cash back. If you are not using those credit cards, then you're not getting those 10% cash back. If you use a gift card, then you're losing out on that 5%. You spend $100 at a restaurant, it could have cost you only $90, but instead you use that $100 gift card, then you essentially spent $100 instead. So instead you put it in here, $100, then it really means $100. Now what's the alternative to this? is you can theoretically use a credit card to pay all these, but most of the time you do not get such a good cash back amount in very, very special circumstances. For example, the US Bank Cash Plus card, it will have a 5% off uh, cash back on utility. So, you know, it'll cross those out. And uh, Citibank Double, you can pay uh, these guys 2%. So what you do really depends on what you have at your disposal in terms of cash back. You really have to map everything out and see what the opportunity costs are. Now, a subscriber showed me something really cool called VitaCost, which is a place that allows you to buy low cost health foods, including beans, uh, spices and things. VitaCost did not sponsor this video. I'm just mentioning it. And when you compare it to the Amazon prices, it is lower on VitaCost. On top of using the VitaCost thing, I used the Honey Chrome extension on top of that. This Chrome extension allows me to automatically check a lot of different coupon codes. If you're interested in this Honey Chrome extension, you can use my referral link down in the video description below. If you use my referral link, you will get $5 cash back the first time you use that thing. I forgot to mention one more thing when I was talking about the international fees. When I am out and about internationally, I would use the Capital One Quick Silver card because that has no foreign transaction fee and I still get 1.5% cash back. If I were to use one of these fancy cards and stuff, I might get a foreign transaction fee that might completely wipe out whatever cash back that I get. And the fees that they charge is substantial if there is a foreign transaction fee. So sometimes when you're going international, you also want to withdraw some money from an ATM. It's you guys, the subscribers that are commenting on my videos and recommending me stuff, and I am actually going out there trying these things and I go, oh yeah, you know what, it does work. Many of you have asked me to try the Charles Schwab investor savings account because this account, you can go around everywhere internationally and use any ATM that you want and there will be no ATM fee, no transaction fees. Before I've been stupidly using other cards and I think I paid, you know, in aggregate, probably 20, $30 worth of fees or probably even more. I got my card and everything. I even tested it out to make sure that I can withdraw 20 bucks from just some random ATM to see that it does not charge me a fee after all. So if you guys are interested, it's called Charles Schwab Investor Checking Account. It does require you to um, have an equities account with them already. It's worth it, but the way to play this is only put enough money in there for the amount that you think you're going to need while you're international because the interest rate on this is only about 0.5% APY. The best one that you should use for a savings account if you're just sticking cash in there. For me personally, I feel like the Goldman Sachs Marcus account is the best right now. Right now it's October 2018, 1.95% APY on that account. No strings attached, not like some accounts where 
you gotta have a debit card and use it 30 times a month or something or like have a credit card associated with it and spend at least $500 every single month. There are no requirements like that, which is what I personally like. I don't want to keep on doing work every single month and I'm trying to chase it so that it doesn't charge me a fee. I want to be able to do nothing. Okay, when I open these accounts, I wanna do nothing, have it not charge me anything and, and um, not need to actively make sure I do not get charged a monthly fee. So I hope all this was interesting for you. This is like the state of the art method here. You know, I've been whittling at this and trying to improve it left and right, here, there. And uh, right now, you know, you can probably improve on this some more. And I am and probably gonna make new videos uh, going forward. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and sort of pulled a little bit of information here and there and you can use it in your own uh, credit card uh, cash back methods. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below, let me know if this helps you. Remember that I do have the referral links down in the video description below if you're interested in supporting this channel. Don't forget to push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching.